I am um, continuing my discussion of the controversy at Stanford involving free speech. You remember that this controversy was kindled by a uh, judge, a district judge, who came, uh, Judge Duncan, Kyle Duncan, who came to speak at Stanford and was completely shut down by howling and screaming activists. An administrator was called in who sided with the activists. Uh, happily, that administrator is now placed on leave. Uh, the Stanford dean has affirmed Stanford's commitment to free speech, but, and it's a very big but, no disciplinary action at all taken against any of the protesters, which gives them the sense of, of immunity, of entitlement, of obviously feeling that they can and will do it again. In fact, they sort of did do it again when the dean, Jenny Martinez, uh, stopped into her constitutional law class. There was basically a protest in her class. Uh, her blackboard was completely covered with, um, with activist uh, slogans and uh, paraphernalia. And the students basically said uh, that uh, they, they, were, they were complaining that she was siding with free speech over the, over the protesters. Now, um, in the most recent escalation, a very good escalation, um, U.S. Circuit Court Judge James Ho, um, Asian American guy, has taken the lead. He's followed by another judge, another circuit court judge, Elizabeth Branch. And he goes, guess what? Uh, I'm not going to be hiring any clerks from Stanford Law School. Don't even bother to apply. And, uh, and then Judge Branch has said, I'm not going to do the same. And there's a whole bunch of other judges who are in sympathy with these guys who haven't made any public announcements. But guess what? They might have decided, I won't say anything, but I'm not going to do that either. Now, this is the judiciary protecting itself. Because let's remember, these judges are close. They're part of the same sort of fraternity. And so if you're going to ban a judge from speaking at a law school, what does that say about what the law school is? It's a joke. It's not even really a, a law school because what are law schools if not forums for legal argument, uh, legal discussion, legal back and forth? Remember, our whole legal system is based on the adver adversary system of people on two sides making competing claims. Uh, every time the Supreme Court has uh, an issue before it, it has two opposite sides arguing, they each get 30 minutes. So this is our whole system. This is how it works. And yet what Stanford Law School activists are trying to do is shut down the system. In a sense, destroy the rule of law. And so the judges, and Judge Ho in particular, knows what is at stake. He knows that Stanford has kind of backed down. They've asserted a commitment to free speech. But his point is, that's not enough. And he gave a speech about this, Judge Ho did. And I just want to read a few sentences because they're very telling. He says, first of all, he goes, uh, he makes the point that it's no accident that the worst free speech violations occur on law schools where there is no intellectual diversity. In other words, if, there, if the law school had a bunch of conservatives and Republicans and patriots and Christians, they'd be like, are you people crazy? We're not going to participate in this or we're going to organize a counter protest. But it's only because these schools are so lopsided. They're full of leftists and black activists and Chicano activists and gay activists. And this is the, the, the whole body of the law school. So they're able to mobilize, in many cases, a majority of people on their, on their behalf or on their side. Here's Judge Ho uh, talking. What some law schools tolerate and even encourage today is not intellectual exploration, but intellectual terrorism. Students don't try to engage and learn from one another. They engage in disruption, intimidation, public shaming. They try to terrorize people into submission and self-censorship in a deliberate campaign to eradicate certain viewpoints. And then he goes on to give a practical example, very simple one. He goes, I go back to my alma mater, the University of Chicago. He says a few years ago, the law school had an event featuring a professor who, favors, uh, who favored laws uh, boycotting the state of Israel. He says, before the event, the law school reminded students of its free speech policy. But one student thought he had a, a loophole. And instead of disrupting the event in itself, he recruited a bunch of his friends to go disrupt the event. You do it, not me. That way they, can, they can't punish you. They, they can't punish me. He goes, well, my law school, this is Judge Ho talking, was not impressed. Chicago suspended the law school student for the rest of the year and told him that he'd have to reapply for admission 
if he ever wanted to come back. And basically, Judge Ho is saying, actions must have consequences. And nowhere is this more true. Our whole legal system is based on that. You do something wrong, you break the law, actions have consequences. You're gonna be held accountable for breaking the law. And if you don't teach these lessons in law school, when are they going to be taught? So his point is, let's see Stanford give us not talk, but action, and then maybe I'll reconsider and hire some clerks from Stanford Law School.